Sorry, the Bible reading was difficult. <laughs> Strange words from the Bible. But uh, the story is really about Joshua. Uh, Joshua is the first of 14 judges. So the book of Joshua and Judges go together. Uh, and what distinguishes the judges is God called a certain person every time trouble arose, to go deal with the problem. And that's the application to you and me. Uh, we have to be judges, not only of the world, but of the situations and circumstances around us so that we make a difference in the world. I've talked to you about the first five books. But the first seven books are all in order, for sure and uh, how they apply to us. And the book of Joshua is, we talked at, uh, last week about Deuteronomy being a call to war. Uh, we're at war with the world, uh, and, and it's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. And the book of Joshua is about each person's individual war with whatever's going on. Uh, if you just go through Joshua and outline it by chapter, uh, you'd find out that in the first chapter he says we need to renew our promise and, and be fearless and courageous as we go forth to do battle. And God set up Joshua to lead the nation to take over the country of uh, that was not theirs yet, but God had promised to them and it's all the land of Cana. There was no uh, Palestine. There's a place where the Palestinians lived. And if you caught that out of the reading that Dave so bravely did, uh, you would understand that uh, none of the Anakin were left in the land. Anakins were giants. Uh, it's the same word, same group of people that in, in Genesis chapter 6, when it talked about the Nephilim, uh, it's just a group of giants. And he says that none of them were left in the land except in the land, except in Gaza, uh, in Gath. Now, the word Gath ought to bring something to mind uh, uh, later on in Scripture, that because uh, there was a big guy that had to be dealt with in Gath. Anybody remember his name? Goliath, yeah. Isn't it really strange that God took care of all the giants of the land except the giants in one city that David was going to have to defeat later on? So you understand, when you go to war, God's not going to solve all the problems because some of the problems are left for somebody else. Our job is to be faithful in the battle. Uh, and of course, there's the story of the, the two spies going into Jericho and being taken in by a harlot named huh? now, Ray, this was Rahab uh, Jezebel didn't get in uh, but uh, so there's this whole story about the scarlet thread uh, and it's important because the scarlet thread introduces us to Rahab. And Rahab was David's great-great-grandmother. And she started off as a harlot in the town of Jericho. And she was the only one to survive. And then the next book, Ruth, 
is about a Moabite woman who became the great-grandmother of David. And she was an outsider also. So you got to understand our mission in earth and, and in towns and in countryside and the people that we see and talk to is really all about even including those that don't seem like they're worthy, those that don't uh, meet our, quote, religious thoughts, uh, our religious goals or whatever. These people were outside of all that. They were outside the commonwealth of Israel even. And God says, I'll work, I'm going to include them because they're trying to do right. Matter of fact, if God didn't include those that were trying to do right, a lot of us wouldn't be in there when you think about it. So Rahab was included. And as soon as they crossed the Jordan River to go into the land to take it, God's provision of manna stopped coming every morning. And the reason was, God said, I'm going to give you tables full of food. I'm going to give you vineyards full of grapes. I'm going to give you crops that you didn't raise. And you're not going to have to worry about the food anymore. So understand that sometimes the provisions God gives us come from something other than what we've had. They come from another source. And of course, they took Jericho, and everybody in Jericho was killed except Rahab and her family. Uh, but there was this one guy who didn't follow the rules, whose name was Anakin, and his last name wasn't Skywalker. <laughs> he didn't follow the rules. He kept some of the bounty they collected for himself. So when they went to battle against the next town, which was Ai, they got defeated. And a bunch of them got killed. Because they did not obey God faithfully. So you understand it's really important for you and me, when God says do something, do it exactly the way he says do it. He's not telling us that so that we can make up the rules as we go. He's telling us that. Because he has it laid out a certain way, and we have to follow his plan. They got defeated in trying to take Ai, and <clears throat> then a whole bunch of kings got bold because of that. Five kings, and they, they gathered together all the Canaanites to come up against uh, Joshua and the Israelites. And Joshua defeated them all, executed all the kings, uh, destroyed everything they owned. And then we read about Joshua's conquest in Joshua chapter 11. Now you understand it says it's Joshua's conquest because God called Joshua to be the judge over the land at that time. And you may think, well... He did a really good job, but he didn't. Uh, after Joshua had gotten through and retired and died, you could put together a map of all the territories that Joshua conquered. And he didn't conquer all of it. And a big part of what he didn't conquer was Philistines which is where they get the word Palestine from. They've been there ever since, and they've been a problem ever since. They didn't conquer the town of Gath. David had to set them straight. They didn't conquer all the land to the north, uh, Bashan, which is the modern country of Lebanon. And most of the rockets that are hitting Israel today come from Lebanon. So you understand, completing the job that God says do is just as important as starting it. Because it'll have, it'll have ramifications way down the line. This is 5,000 years later, and they're still dealing with the problem. 
even though Joshua conquered a great deal of the land, it wasn't all done. Now you got to ask yourself, well, why did God allow it to be that way? Because of the war that the world is in right now. God's plan was not to completely wipe out everybody. That's part of the problem today. And God's going to take care of that problem one day because all the armies are going to come against Israel one day. And Jesus is going to come back and wipe them all out. There won't be anybody left then. Except those that fake following Jesus. And after the millennium, after the thousand-year reign of Jesus in peace, Satan's going to be loose and another rebellion is going to come about. And God's going to wipe all them out too. I love uh, people talking, telling me how much they appreciated John Lennon's song, Give Peace a Chance. Well, guess what? The millennium proves that Give Peace a Chance don't work. Because there's still going to be rebels in the kingdom. In chapter 12 uh, of Joshua, it lists 33 city-states or kingdom city-states that are all defeated by Joshua. He wiped them all out. So that covers the blue land. Then he talks about dividing the land up and the Levite getting a portion and the eastern tribes going back east of the Jordan River. And Joshua warns the people. He warns the people about what their issues are and what the process is going to be involved. And if there is a a verse in Joshua that should everyone should read, it's Joshua chapter 24. Uh, Joshua is giving them their final instructions. And he's telling them this because individually they're going to have to fight their own battles. And that's really the message today. Everybody here has got to fight their own battle. Husband has to fight one. The wife has to fight one. The kids have to fight one. We're all in a battle. And it's not going to give up until we're raptured out. And he tells them in Joshua 24, uh, 24 chapter, chapter 24, verses 14 and 15, he says, Now there, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served and the other side of the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, And here's what he really says. He says, choose you this day who you're going to serve. And that's the, that's really the choice we have to make every day. He says, whether it be the gods of your fathers, these served on the other side of the river, the gods of the Amorites in the land in whose land you dwell. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the way it has to be, folks. It has to be every day a decision. Who are you going to serve? Because Satan's not going to give up trying to make you compromise your values for what the world's values are. And that's the danger. And going to work and working 12 hours a, a day or eight hours if you're lucky, but uh, Uh, as many days as you can until you turn 55 or 65 or whatever the government says is retirement age. It's a battle every day. It's a battle every day just to keep your head straight about who you really serve. It's a battle every day to keep your priorities straight and stay on the narrow pathway. And your job, everybody's job in in this building is Stay on God's pathway. Choose to serve him every day. Because it will sneak up on you and snatch you away in a minute. 
And that's not what you want. You want to start the trip and end the trip on the same pathway. Well, let's close in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that that you remind us often that our job really is to just follow you, serve you, to do things your way, uh, to be obedient. We want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So help us be your servants all the days of our lives. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.